Lisbon is not Paris, it's not the world capital, a world uh, European capital of fashion, but it has quite some interesting stories. Chiado, the neighborhood of Chiado is, was the most expensive, it still is one of the most expensive neighborhoods of Lisbon, which means that's where the elites used to live. Chiado was the number one place to go out shopping in Lisbon. And so some of the most beautiful shops are in Chiado. Louveria Ulisses is perhaps one of those stores that you see in the, the travel uh, books because it is quite peculiar. It is a very, very small shop. As you can see it this way, it only fits three people in there. These gloves are custom made, so you go in there, you put your elbow on the pillow, as you can see in here, and this cushion, and they will fit the glove, uh, which then they readapt the glove to your hand, so it literally fits like a glove. You can choose the trimmings, you can choose the materials, and then they have at the back, they have a workshop in which they readjust the glove for uh, your own hands. It is designed in neoclassical style. It opened in 1925. At that time, there were other seven stores selling gloves all around this one. Nowadays, this is the only one. And particularly, uh, this happened because fashion has changed. Uh, people's habits have changed. But in Portugal, it was not only fashion changing, but fashion always goes hand in hand with uh, what is happening in the world. And in 1974, we had a revolution in Portugal that ended uh, more than 50 years of dictatorship. And gloves started to be associated with the elites that um, had a lot of privilege during the dictatorship. So it came out of fashion to wear gloves. This one resisted until this day. As you can imagine, there's always a line because uh, you don't fit a lot of people in the store. You could go to Sapeteria do Carmo right next to the glove store or to the address that I give you here, which is a little bit above in the square, in Largo do Carmo. I gave you this address because this is the original store. So Sapeteria do Carmo opened 240 years ago and 20 years ago. So in 1904, it is unbelievable. But uh, it is it was in the same family until 2012. Uh, in 2012, things were not doing very well in Portugal financially, so they probably were a bit tired and they found an investor and they decided that it was time to end the business for the family. Portugal has a very, very good high quality shoe industry. So these shoes are all handmade in Portugal and um, the leather also is Portuguese and some of the leather is Italian but everything else is made in Portugal by hand in the north of Portugal where the shoe industry is. They are I think well-priced shoes like for example you can spend about 200 and something euros on a pair of boots but these boots will last you a long, long time, particularly if you don't live in Lisbon or in Portugal because of our cobblestones that destroy everything, including the shoes. But um, if you have uh, a good cobbler that can look after your shoes, uh, this will last you decades. And it's okay to last decades because most of the models that they sell in here are timeless. So these are investment pieces for your wardrobe. They sell both for men and for women and I am guilty as charged because I have a few pairs from this shop and I must tell you that they are literally a one of the best investments that I made. So if you want to come and buy shoes, this is one of my recommendations. Some of the shoe stores have been closing in the past few years. This one has two stores at least, they also sell online. From shoes, so we had gloves, we have shoes, now we move on to hats. And uh, this is, well, we do have some shops selling hats, even because it's super sunny here in Lisbon, particularly in the summer, not today that it's pouring outside. But these hats are made in the workshop of this store. 
This store is in Praça Dom Pedro IV, uh, which is also known as Rocio Square. So Rocio Square is where we have uh, the National Theatre, is one of the largest square of the downtown of the historical center of Lisbon. And it's very close to the Ginginha place. And Chapeleria uh, Azevedo Rua, it's been in the same family since 1886. In 1886, this was not the only milliner uh, in this square. This was the square of the milliners. Because the downtown of Lisbon was rebuilt after the earthquake of 1755. And um, when the city was rebuilt, the person who was in charge of rebuilding Lisbon, the Prime Minister of Portugal, he decided that the downtown of Lisbon was going to be the commercial center of Lisbon. So he designs the downtown of Lisbon in a grid system in which the, the streets that go towards south, so towards the river, are, uh, have the name of trade. So the trades were divided into um, that uh, neighborhood. So for example, you have the Gold Street, you have the Silver Street, you have the Cod Street, that's actually where uh, the tin sardines are. But the milliners were in the main, uh, in the second biggest square in uh, the downtown of Lisbon, which is Rocio Square. 